Hello, everybody. Good afternoon from St. Petersburg, Russia. My name is Alek Prinitsky, and uh, I work for the Language Testing Center at St. Petersburg State University as a, an, a, as a tester or examiner. And uh, can you hear us? Say yes in the chat box, if possible. Thank you. And merhabalar Türkiye'deki öğrenen Rusça öğrenen öğrencilere. You can write in Turkish. I can try and understand and answer your questions. I can see some people from Turkey. And uh, today's topic is test of Russian as a foreign language. A2 level. And you might know that uh, this level is more important than A2 level. And uh, statistically, uh, A level is taken, well, by 50 candidates only a year. But this level is taken by 13,000 candidates a year. So you see, uh, much, much more candidates take this examination and it's much more important. And uh, just a few words about St. Petersburg State University and our testing center. As you might see in uh, the slide, it's the oldest university in Russia, was founded in 1724 by Peter the uh, uh, the Russian Emperor Peter the Great. It's one of the country's leading universities and more than 30,000 students and 12,000 academic staff work here. And uh, we've had almost 70 years of teaching Russian as a foreign language uh, in this educational institution. And uh, Language Testing Center that I work for was founded on the 22nd of August 1997. And we have, as you can see here, we have Russian language testing centers in Greece, Germany, Turkey, Serbia, South Korea, China, the Czech Republic, Norway, Great Britain, Italy, Poland, Argentina, Brazil, even Iceland, and I think in many other countries. Actually, there are 80 testing centers abroad now. We are also a partner of Association of Language Testers of Europe, ALT. You might know this organization. And uh, uh, after successfully passing your examinations, we issue internationally recognized uh, certificate. Okay, let's, well, it's, that's all about the history of the university. We move on. Uh, that uh, uh, how certificate looks. It's uh, officially recognized state certificate. Well, in Russian as a foreign language. I look at it for a second, and we move on. Good. So today we are focusing on A2, or basic level. Well, the, the academicians, teachers, uh, examiners use different terminology for this. These are just two, or a pre-threshold level. What does it mean? Yeah, now I'm talking about A2 level brief description. Uh, it means something uh, like that, that uh, threshold, you know, it's uh, uh, an area before, uh, before the door, which uh, you'd like to open in a more serious world of uh, skills, languages, and so, so on, any other areas yeah, of life. 
so next will be B1 level. It's an independent level. So it's kind of you're staying here at pre-threshold level. And you need uh, uh, 1,300 active words to speak. And usually it takes uh, from 100 to 80, uh, 80 hours to 200 hours from A1 level. Let's uh, uh, focus on A2. Well, specifications. Well, uh, here we focus on most necessary communicative tasks in everyday life, in everyday communication. And we, of course, we use limited grammar and vocabulary. Well, normally, mm, students speak about everyday routines in social, cultural, classroom, working areas of communication. So it's a bit limited, too. Now, uh, you might know that uh, all levels, uh, when you're doing the test in Russian as a foreign language, are in line with CIFAR self, CIFAR, or Common European Frame of uh, Reference. Now, uh, take a look at uh, CIFAR self-assessment scale. What should you do and what can you do at A2 level? When you listen, you can understand phrases and the highest frequency vocabulary related to areas of most immediate personal relevance, like very basic personal and family information, uh, shopping things, local area employment, and so on. And you can catch the main point in short, clear, and simple messages and announcements. Actually, here you produce, uh, even though it's not a productive skill, you produce uh, understanding of what you hear or read in the next line or box. Uh, uh, when talking about reading, you can read very short, simple texts. You can find specific, predictable, predictable information in simple, everyday uh, materials such as advertisements, prospectus, menus, timetables, and you can understand short, simple, personal letters. Next, uh, speaking or productive skills. Uh, uh, if you focus on dialogue skills, you can communicate in a simple and routine tasks requiring a simple and direct exchange of information on familiar topics and activities. And you can handle very short social exchanges, uh, prefabricated with uh, chunks of language, even though you can't usually understand enough to develop or to keep the conversation going by yourself. And, uh, uh, well, the monologue, you can use a series of phrases and sentences to decry describe in simple terms your family and other people, living conditions, your educational background, and your present and most recent jobs. And uh, when talking about writing, you can write short, again, simple notes and messages relating to matters in areas of immediate needs of a student. I can, you can write a very simple personal letter, for example, thanking someone for something and so on. Well, and uh, a student at A2 level must use a range of simple prefabricated structures, word combinations, and fixed phrases to report limited information in, limited, in everyday situations. Uh, and they use correctly some simple structures 
although systematically they make some elementary mistakes. That's quite normal. And uh, uh, a candidate is able to clearly express his or her thought with very short sentences, even though he or she is pausing, self-correcting, or repeating, or hesitating. Well, and the uh, candidate responds appropriately to all instructions, questions, and simple utterances, and is able to demonstrate that he or she follows the other person's thought, but hardly ever understands enough to develop the conversation. And uh, uh, when we talk about cohesion, uh, the candidate is able to join words and group of words with a range of simple linkers expressing cause, result, purpose, relationships. Uh, for example, uh, and, but, when, then, because, so, the same in Russian. All right, we move on. And now we are focusing on the test format. It contains five subtests or five papers, namely grammar and vocabulary, reading, listening, speaking, and writing. Well, and the passing score is 66% for each test. Well, and you can also uh, have 60 or more than 60% with one of the tests. In this case, it is considered, uh, so your result is considered positive or satisfactory. And uh, it's possible also to receive one or two subtests papers. But if you fail uh, three or more subtests, you should receive the whole test. Next. Well, let's focus on each test. And the first one uh, is grammar and vocabulary subtest or paper. You see it uh, lasts 50 minutes. It has five sections and contains 100 tasks. And in this test, we are mainly focusing on vocabulary usage, noun, adjective, and pronoun cases, verbs of motion with prefixes, verb system in general, and sixth syntax, different conjunctions or linkers. Well, let's look at some examples. Here in uh, this example, we are focusing on uh, Lexis and grammar uh, adjectives and uh, comparative and comparatives. I'll look at the example. So, uh, you have to choose two correct words. What are they? And I only ask uh, uh, students who study at this level, not teachers, to answer the question. Write in the chat box, please. You have four options like stary, starsze, starsze, starik. And you have to choose two correct answers because there are two gaps in this sentence, you see. Yes, uh, Ramaniuk Mariana, you are right. Moi starsze brat uje rabotet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rabanyan Veronica. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, V and B. Yes, it's that's perfect. Thank you. And uh, some more practice. You see, there are 
uh, four tasks. Mm -hmm. Try to answer them by yourself. Я играть на гитаре. Мой друг посоветовал мне посмотреть фильм. It and so on. Mm -hmm. Рейхан Елмаз, Дору. And uh, uh, task three. Мой друг посоветовал мне посмотреть. Exactly. Özlüyberk Doru, этот фильм. And uh, task four. Он носит очки, потому что плохо. Exactly. It's four A. And five. Музыканты часто выступают. So here we check adjective cases and prepositions. It's five B in Russian. В популярных клубах is correct answer. Thank you very much. You are very good in doing the grammar test. All right. Now we move on. Uh, but it doesn't move. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's reading, subtest or paper. Well, as you can see on the chart or on the slide, it lasts 50 minutes. It has four parts and contains 30 tasks. Well, and uh, what, uh, what are we focusing on here in this, uh, in this section in the reading subtest? What abilities do we test? We test uh, these things there on the right. First, uh, phrases to be logically completed. A passage of an article, topic identification is the task. Passages from the tests, texts, and you search for information, for matching information here. And uh, finally, we have a description or descriptive test, text two and fifty three hundred words and you see uh, you can use a bilingual dictionary that's very very important don't exaggerate it but I think it's you usually it's better to uh, bring it with you when you taking exams and uh, please let's do it together uh, task one it's uh, about phrases to be logically completed. Jean плохо понимает по-русски. Which is the correct answer? Very good. It's 1A. Thank you, Peruzza Erika. And uh, task 2, скоро праздник. It's A again. Thank you, Özlü Eiberg. And now uh, look at a much longer text. Well, uh, it's a story about uh, Moscow. Please read it, please. Well, try to read it quickly. Scan the text. And... Mm -hmm. Identify the topic of the text and search for specific information in task four. Identify the topic of the test text in task three and search for specific information in task four.
Okay, you need time to read it. But try to read it quickly and look for information you need. That's a good strategy. So you first read the task quickly and then you find information in the text. And now I'll I'll show you correct answers if you're ready. Uh, I, I'll, I'll give you some more time. One minute, I think, is enough. So, we have different answers for task three. It's like A, A, B, not there, and four is a bear mm -hmm. so <laughs> you have uh, the range of uh, answers well and it means it's been a bit difficult for you now uh, take a look at correct answers please look at this so you see uh, in task 2 uh, the main idea of the text is A, and in task 4, the correct answer is B. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. So you you can see this is a kind of uh, kind of exercises or tasks you'll be given at this test, and uh, this is just an extract from the te text. The texts uh, should be much longer actually, and there are five, six, or even eight tasks after long texts. So not that. Not that easy, really. Okay, we'll move on. And now we are focusing on listening paper or a listening subtest. Uh, well, as you can see on the slide, the test lasts 30 minutes. It has five parts and contains 25 tasks. And uh, we check uh, understanding, in this test we check understanding on phrases level, uh, in dialects for topic identification or searching for main idea. Uh, well, dialects again, you have to search for specific information and, uh, well, monologues as well. And you must know that all texts are repeated twice on this level. Uh, let's uh, look at the example first. Я был в Париже в прошлом году. Choose, please, the correct answer. Very good, very good. The correct answer is B. Я ездил в Париж в прошлом году. Uh, great offering, Sana Sanize. Next, and I'd like you to do this test, sir, and another person will read statements and dialects, please. Задание 2. Давай Listen, возьмем please. такси. Мы опаздываем в театр. Давай возьмем такси. 
Мы опаздываем Do the test, please. Yeah. Thank you. Do the task, please. Two. Task two, the correct answer. Okay. You just uh, put it down on your papers. Uh, later, we'll check it. Check them. Please, can you continue? Задание три. Антон. Сегодня вечером ко мне придут гости. Сегодня вечером ко мне придут гости. Thank you. Please do the task. Find the correct answer. Thank you. Can you continue? Задание четыре. Task four. Где они говорят? Я хочу купить один билет на самолет. На какое число? На десятое. Куда вы летите? В Новосибирск. Есть билет на самолет, который летит из Москвы в 9 часов. Хорошо. Сколько он стоит? Я хочу купить один билет на самолет. На какое число? На десятое. Куда вы летите? В Новосибирск. Есть билеты на самолет, который летит из Москвы в 9 часов. Хорошо. Сколько он стоит? Do the task, please. And now you can check your answers. So you see, in task two, the correct answer is where three are and four B. If all your answers are correct, you are great candidates. Thank you. Well, and uh, if it's okay, we just move on. And uh, here, I'd like you to look at some technical things, yeah? Uh, for example, uh, we did some exercises uh, to check your reading ability at this level, but uh, how to fill out the working matrix? You see, it's very, very simple. But first, you put down your family name and your name in the gap on the matrix, then your country or the country of your citizenship, and then uh, the specific date. And uh, uh, when you have chosen the correct answer, you just circle a particular letter on the matrix, like here on the chart. But sometimes you you are not very sure if it was correct or not, and uh, then you you think it, it wasn't so. You just cross the first option out and circle another option if you change your mind. So you see, it's very simple. And uh, examiners only check this working matrices against control matrices just not to waste time and uh, well yeah just to be quick with checking is it clear for you if it is we just move on and now we are focusing on uh, productive skills uh, like writing and uh, speaking. First, it's writing subtest or paper, and by many students or candidates, it uh, it is considered to, to be most difficult one. First, you see, you can use a bilingual dictionary to do the test. That's important, and uh, so. You have 50 minutes 
to do the, to the test. And there are only two tasks. In task one, it's important to write from 18 to 20 phrases. In task two, you you are asked to write five phrases at least. Of course, you can write more, but not less. If you write less, uh, so, uh, well, some points will be subtracted from uh, your final mark or score. Let's look at uh, uh, these two tasks. Well, task one, look at it. I'll say it in English. Mm -hmm. uh, you have recently come back from your travel to another country. Uh, write a letter to your friend and uh, talk or tell him or her about your journey to another country. Uh, later in the task, yeah, you have a kind of plan. And all these points are necessary, necessary to be uh, reflected in your letter. Like here, look, uh, where you went and who with, what kind of transport you used to go there, how long your journey took. For example, yeah, actually the list is uh, much longer. And uh, then you have to ask some questions, like if your friend likes traveling, where he's already been, and uh, what kind of travel advice he can give you or she can give you. Well, here's an interesting question. What about the handwritten letter? Should we write it down when we correct our answers on the answer sheet? Well, uh, it's not very clear for me, this question, but uh, I, I think I can understand what you mean. You should make any corrections in the ha handwritten letter. It's not important. It's not important. Make any corrections which you think, which you think uh, necessary. And let's focus on uh, uh, exercise two. Uh, you haven't been to classes recently. Write a note to your teacher and explain, explain why you haven't been to your classes. And here five phrases is enough. But you can write more, of course. OK. So that's the writing test uh, subtest format at this level. And we move on to the speaking subtest. It takes 25 minutes. It has three parts and contains 11 tasks. And uh, to prepare a monologue uh, on a particular topic, you have 10 minutes to prepare your monologue. That's important too. And you, you see, you can use, uh, uh, again, you can use a bilingual dictionary to prepare your monologue. So don't forget to bring it with you. Well, uh, in this section, there are three parts, as I said. In the first part, you answer the questions, actually. 
the five tasks. And in section two, uh, the examiner explains you a situation and you should start a conversation, a dialogue. The five tasks again. And finally, you prepare a monologue on a particular topic. Here, it's task three. The topic is how I spend my free time. Mm -hmm. And what is important when you're preparing for a monologue? It's important to have in your story, in your monologue, to have uh, full and extended answers for these questions. Look at them. Like, какие книги вам нравятся? Как часто вы ходите в музеи, в кино, на выставки? Какими видами спорта вы занимаетесь? Какие передачи вы любите смотреть по телевизору? Какая музыка вам нравится? У вас, у вас есть хобби? Какое? And so on. Uh, there may, may be even more questions. It doesn't matter. I, I, I just want you to show what kind of questions uh, you can come across in this exercise. And e if you want, so we can, uh, we can try to do tasks one and two. Anton, can you join us? Sure. Anton, can you join us? Very good, thank you. Yeah, uh, task one, take part. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Please write in a chat box. Thank you. You should do it quickly if you want to, of course. Yeah, write in the chat box your quick answer. No one's writing, Anton. Someone is writing. Ah, good. At least one of them. Thank you, De Edward. Yeah, uh, the rest of candidates are <laughs> doing their own things, yeah. <laughs> just uh, uh, meeting each other and talking. That's that's good too. Thank you. Я изучаю русский язык, потому что я люблю Россию. That's a good possible answer. And Anton, uh, now it's task two. So you. Uh, uh, describe uh, a particular situation and you please, uh, candidates, you write down in the chat box uh, uh, the first phrase in the dialogue, in the conversation. Can you, Anton? Вы на улице. Вы не знаете, где магазин. Спросите об этом у прохожего. Can you repeat this, please? Вы на улице. Вы не знаете, где магазин. Спросите об этом у прохожего. Thank you, Anton. Uh, so please, candidate, candidates, yeah, write an answer if possible in the chat box.
thank you for the candidates for a given answers in uh, task one. Why do you study Russian? And Mariana, thank you for your answer. That's just perfect. Thank you, Edward. That's good, very good. Thank you, Erika. That's been very good. Thank you, Irene. That's good. And Viarella. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, dear candidates, for giving your answers. Thank you, thank you. All right. And uh, we are moving to uh, to other other things. What is important uh, when you speak or write? Let's uh, take a look at productive skills assessment parameters. Uh, now, you know that productive skills, what are productive skills? Can you put it down in the chat box? What abilities we call productive in foreign languages? Well, and in native languages, of course. Yeah, there, uh, well, okay, I'm lacking of time, so uh, I'll tell you, uh, we usually consider productive abilities or skills, yeah, thank you, Peter, that's very good, speaking and writing, so actually we are talking about assessment parameters or criteria for these skills. Look. It's very important. Look on the first one. Yeah, it's very important that your uh, contribution, if it's speaking or writing, is adequate to communicative task. What do you think? What uh, does it mean, this parameter? Look at three options one, two, and three. What does it mean? Adequacy of communicative task solution. Teachers, I know <laughs> you are good at that, but I'm asking students. What do students think? So again, or what do you think it may mean to be adequate at achieving your communicative goal? Yeah, thank you, Erika, Irini, Manuela, you're all right. Uh, yeah, number two is correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's uh, the first and the most important thing, yeah you should be adequate. Another thing is uh, compliance with specified volume of utterance or message. What it means, yeah, if uh, the volume is specified, for example, подготовьте сообщение на тему моя семья, it's speaking task three, and you see in brackets there have to be from 12 to 15 sentences, you have to be, you have to comply with this specified number of sentences. And look at the example. Моя семья маленькая, я мама и отец. Ну, это все. You, well, 
you are aware uh, that this answer is not very good and it's it's just not enough it doesn't comply with specified volume of our trends if it's clear we move on so again you need to be adequate yeah when writing or speaking about something and you have to comply with specified volume of utterance or message or whatever you produce in writing or speaking. Next, what else is important? Well, another thing is completeness of information presentation. For example, uh, you have to write a letter to your Russian friend tell him or her when you have vacations and ask him or her what he's doing at this time and invite him or her uh, as a guest uh, to your house or to your city. What do you think? What kind of mistake, uh, according to this parameter, can uh, a candidate make in this example. So now teachers help us. <laughs> what do you think? <coughs> what kind of mistake can you do? Can you make? Sorry when doing this task. Okay. The time is running out very quickly today. So I'll tell you, oh no, uh, someone's typing. Mm-hmm. Whichever, uh, it's Yulia, the candidate can forget to answer one of the questions. Exactly, Yulia, thank you. If you, well, forget to answer or you miss something to answer, it would be considered as a big mistake and you will be subtracted up to five points if you miss something from your story. Like, for example, when do you have vacations? Yeah, kind of this. And another parameter is cohesion and coherence. Look at the example. It's about logic and uh, linkers you use when uh, making uh, a text, either in writing or in speaking. Uh, the student says, no, Обычно я отдыхаю в Европе, и мне нравится очень красивая архитектура там. You see, until this, it, this place, everything's all right. Next. А я, собственно, знакомые места, да. Это мой отпуск. And you see, uh, the phrase uh, in, in bold, well is not coherent to the previous one, two, three phrases. Right? Can you see this? No linkers, no logic, no coherence. And this is quite a big mistake again. For this sort of mistake, you are subtracted two points. Yeah. You are right, guys. Another thing, we move on. It's again about parameters. Well, you, uh, the candidates usually make quite a lot of mistakes at this level, and but the mistakes are different, can be different. Uh, they're serious and not very serious mistakes. Uh, and uh, the mistakes which we consider serious 
we call them communicatively significant error. Uh, this is a mistake which impedes communication. What it means? Look at the examples. В этом магазине есть часто статьи о моде. Look at the words in bold. Mm -hmm. Why do you think we consider this mistake significant, impeding communication? What do you think? Can you write it in the chat quickly? Well, and uh, you can write ab uh, about another example. Я тратил русский язык долго, но так хорошо не понимаю грамматику все равно. Тратил is in bold. It means that uh, the error is serious. No one's typing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Viarella, thank you. Mm -hmm. Exactly, Mariana. Exactly. Thank you very much. Your answers are very good, uh, very relevant to what I'm talking about. Yeah. And uh, uh, we are not uh, really interested why uh, a candidate has made that or another mistake. Uh, we just consider it. And, uh, well, for communicatively significant errors, you are subtracted two points. That's quite a lot. So be very careful with this. Well, just a few words. Uh, yeah, you are right, Viarella. Magazin. Uh, in many languages, uh, it's, uh, it's, this word means uh, uh, journal, as in French uh, and in Russian. Yeah, journal is a paper product like newspaper, something like that. And in uh, example two, probably uh, uh, the native language has interfered greatly and uh, the student directly translated what, uh, what he meant to say in his own language. I, 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 probably that was English-speaking person. I spent too much time on Russian but I still don't understand the grammar. Yeah, you see, in English it's very good, but in Russian it's not. And um, another type of errors are communicatively insignificant errors. Look at the example, and as you might uh, mm, understand, these errors are not, significant, are not significant because they don't impede conversation. Yeah, we can understand the message. Look uh, at the examples. Когда у меня свободное время, я очень люблю читать книгу. Well, naturally, it's a mistake in Russian. We use here plural, the plural form of uh, noun. Я люблю читать книги, but the mistake is not very important. Uh, the same in another example, it's about noun cases. Благодаря их помощи would be correct. Mm -hmm. Well, so we don't consider these mistakes very serious, but we subtract 1.5 points for such type of mistakes. And look at this bubble. Errors of high level are not assessed. What it means, yeah? For example, you attempt to use uh, in writing or in speaking uh, some uh, more complex structures. Well, in syntax, yeah. Usually it's in syntax. And if you, uh, like, for example, participle construction is very difficult in, Ru in Russian, you might know. And if you make a mistake of this kind of high level, uh, so these mistakes are not assessed. And we move on. 
You see, uh, this chart focuses on extra points. You see, you can get extra points for comprehensive usage of speech etiquette. You might know that eti etiquette, uh, etiquette phrases, they're fixed phrases, prefabricated phrases, like in the example, look at it. Позвоните в больницу и узнайте, когда работает ваш врач. Здравствуйте, извините, пожалуйста, могу я спросить, когда доктор Иванов работает? Well, it's just a perfect example of a comprehensive use of speech etiquette, and you can get extra points for correct usage of it. Next, independence in language use. Example. Как вы думаете, русский язык нужен для вашей профессии? The student says, вы знаете, думаю, не только нужен, но думаю, он необходим. When you develop, when you develop uh, the conversation, it's very important that, that you can develop the conversation, and you can develop it and uh, uh, can appropriately respond on the speaker needs, we call it independence. So if you can do this, you are quite independent and you can get extra points for this. And if uh, another, another point is uh, you are intelligible at pronouncing individual sounds, uh, making word stress and using right intonation. If you do all this, or if you comply with this criteria, you get extra points. Next. And of course, extent. If you use longer phrases, not very short ones like yes, no, I don't know, or isolated words, you get extra points too for this. Okay, and there are some recommendations for task tasks performance. Let's focus first on grammar and vocabulary. Well, I'm not going to say much, you just, uh, a good, it's a good idea to go over a task and correctly allocate the given time for the task. And uh, when you move to reading, it's a good idea first to read questions or phrases, mm -hmm. then find and underline keywords in your answer box. Then you scan the text quickly and underline the keywords in the text. Then you answer the questions or choose phrases in the answers box. Now let's move to listening. It's uh, more or less the same in nature. So you first read answer options, then listen to the text. And you can mark supposedly correct answers in the draft during first listening. And please be sure to follow the form of the word. word sorry. And uh, some recommendations for productive skills, tasks, performance. Well, first, it's about writing. You write a story according to the plan in the task. That is very, very important. And you don't miss anything from the plan. Yeah, If you miss, your product will be considered incomplete and you'll be punished with five points. Yeah. Next, don't write a complete draft. Well, uh, you might understand if you write a complete draft, it'll take a lot of your time. So just manage your time reasonably. That's what this advice about. Yeah, and again, don't miss one of the tasks. What it means, sometimes 
candidates fondly uh, focus only one task, for example, and uh, completely forget about the second task. And that's a very important mistake. And uh, now it's about speaking. Please avoid yes, no, I don't know answers. We've been talking about this already. Uh, it's very important to answer in longer phrases and attempt some complex structures. Yeah, next, answer the questions with one or two phrases. It's connected to the first advice. I, uh, another thing, you don't need to tell the truth. Use your imagination. What I mean, uh, uh, sometimes students and candidates are a bit confused when they ask questions about their own experience. Well, it's okay if you haven't experienced something in your life, just you use your imagination and make up ideas, stories, and so on. Uh, don't get stuck on that. And uh, uh, Mariana is asking me if uh, we, they are given any time to read the questions before the first listen is yes. You are given some times, but you should be very quick. You should be very quick and elaborate. Uh, okay, I continue. And don't forget about the style of your productive skills. And when uh, you are preparing your monologue, please plan it according to the given plan. It's always given in the task. And uh, 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 the same story, don't miss uh, one or two uh, questions and so on. You will be punished for that. Okay, next. Well, and some technical things. Uh, on the day of the test, you should, you must bring a passport or other ID with a photo. Uh, a receipt of payment for examination to ball pens of blue color and bilingual dictionary paper base. Don't forget about this. What is forbidden during the test? Uh, you might understand all electronic devices. Uh, which Özlü uh, Eiberg? Which questions should I repeat? You just write it down in the chat box, and I'll, I'll, I'll continue. So, all electronic devices are forbidden during the text test, and uh, you don't take away examination papers from the classroom. Well, mm -hmm. and you don't copy any test materials or talk to other candidates. Actually, there are many more restrictions, but I think these are uh, the most important ones. And uh, you can use your dictionary during reading, writing, and speaking subtests. Speaking is missing here, I don't know why. So, Özlü Eiberg. Again, which question would you like me to repeat, to say again? Please put it down. Well, and uh, some advice on how to prepare for the test. Well, uh, we think that uh, self-study is, or self-studying is a good idea when preparing for grammar and vocabulary, reading and listening tests. Of course, you should use relevant test materials and course books, which you can find, well, on uh, our website and uh, later in the webinar, 
the, the number of books and course books and so on. You can download load it from the site and, and so, so on. But we we'll recommend you to prepare for writing and speaking subtests with a teacher. That's important. Well, and some other advice. What do you have to know before testing? Yeah, many things actually, but here we we think three things are very important. You should know your own tactics on how to manage the time, your individual tactics. Uh, you have to read instructions for each test very carefully and you have to know how to complete the working matrices. I, I've been already talking about this. Just take a look at this. Yeah, Manuela, it's a good idea to read the options and then give the answer. Uh, mm -hmm. And Lyubov, what kind of literature about level two? It's just in a minute here, yeah? These are standards <laughs> for testing Russian as a foreign language. <clears throat> These are sample tests you can do with your students or by your own or on your own. And these are various course books you can find on European sites, uh, download them or buy them, whatever. And here you can, mm -hmm. you, you see the website of the Language Testing Center at St. Petersburg University, email, telephone numbers, and uh, uh, Facebook connections and Instagram connections. Well, so I advise you to, uh, when before taking exams, you yeah, it's a good idea to uh, to go to the test, uh, so to the website and uh, check information you think is necessary for you. Well, and uh, well, the time is over at this webinar. Mm -hmm. And if you have questions, uh, I can answer. I can answer them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Manuela, you, it's a good idea to read the options before you, yeah, you give correct answers. Irene, thank you for, <laughs> yeah, for appreciation of the webinar. Özlüayberk, teşekkür ederim. Thank you, thank you, guys. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, guys and uh, candidates, uh, dear candidate, don't forget to give us feedback. Thank you. That's all for today. And goodbye. Thank you for your attention.